Hello, I'm Patrick Moore. I'm the director of the Andy Warhol Museum, and I am joined today by my colleague, Jose Diaz, who is the chief curator of the Warhol. And we are delighted as the co-curators and co-organizers of uh, Becoming Andy Warhol to welcome you to the exhibition. We are very sorry that we can't be there with you in person. We've had an extraordinary time working with UCCA and the staff, and we send our thanks to all of them and especially Phil Tenari for their support. Today, we wanted to welcome you to the or exhibition and also uh, talk a little bit about it from our perspective, organizing the show in now two venues in China. And Jose, I thought maybe this would be good for you. UCCA Beijing is of course a very different building uh, physically than UCCA Edge in Shanghai. So what's going to be new in Shanghai? How will the show look the same or different for people who may have seen it before? Yeah, thank you, Patrick. And thank you everyone watching uh, from China. Um, yeah, this new, this new destination is actually gonna be really exciting um, for viewers who've seen the show and for the audiences in Shanghai who are seeing it for the first time. Um, the exhibition is actually the same. So it has uh, five thematic themes, um, origins, Warhol the photographer, cinema as object. Warhol remixed and the immaterial. This is a, these are different thematic chapters that uh, Patrick and I have worked on. And so you'll still get the same experience um, in Shanghai. Um, but Beijing, the space, the space was sort of this big, um, large warehouse and had sort of a central lounge that one can watch Warhol films. And this building is quite different. My understanding is a brand new building. And so this version of the exhibition, Becoming Andy Warhol, it's actually multi, multi floors. You're gonna walk in, you'll have sort of a living room atmosphere. Um, we've worked with an exhibition designer, um, Shaoxi Shen Laurent. Uh, she's based here in the States and she's been really wonderful to work with the uh, UCCA team and the Warhol Museum. And so throughout the museum, you'll walk through these different sections, lots of colorful walls, hundreds of you know, artworks and objects from our collection. And we've actually arranged sort of these corridors with Warhol wallpapers, um, there's going to be uh, sort of these little urban gardens, I, I want to say, where you can stop and sort of uh, see the catalog, take a break, and experience um, becoming Andy Warhol through various floors. And so I don't think it's a show that um, that many people would have, have would have, would experience because it's such a large building and it's such an extensive exhibition. It sounds so, beautiful. Yeah, now I'm really excited. And so yeah, so I wanted to ask you, Patrick, um, could you talk a little about a little bit about Warhol? Um, and why he's important to audiences today, and you know what sort of inspiration you think he might bring to a new generation? Yeah, you know, as you know, Jose, I'm always amazed here at the Warhol at how young our audiences are. They tend to be younger than most museum audiences, and Warhol does seem to remain very relevant to young audiences, and I think there are a couple of reasons for that. Warhol, which was not typical in his day, focused on every possible expression of creativity, whether that was painting and sculpture, drawing, commercial drawings as an illustrator, uh, making television shows for MTV, managing the Velvet Underground, or uh, starting Interview Magazine. And I think that kind of polymath approach to art is very much how young people are today. They don't wanna be put into a box and to say, I'm just a painter, that's all I do. I think that they are really um, open to many, many different possibilities. So I think there's that. And then the other part of it is, you know, Warhol had a particular obsession with fame as we know, but also media in general. And we live in such a media driven world that I think that's really why Warhol feels so right. Sometimes it's super popular, the kind of inclusiveness of Warhol that he displayed in media, mixing people of different races, gender, sexualities, econ economic levels. But then there's also the darkness in Warhol too, uh, where an image is sort of looked at, utilized so many times, it's almost burned out and turns into something else. So I think those two things, uh, media and also working in different um, areas of art production, that's what really feels fresh to Warhol. Similarly, let me ask you, you know, the curatorial program that you've created here at the Warhol really 
focuses for the most part, I mean, of course we have Warhol scholarship, but it focuses also on emerging artists. And I think that that lends a lot of freshness to Warhol's legacy. Are, do some of those young artists that you work with talk to you about Warhol and why they're still drawn to Warhol? Absolutely, and I think it sort of builds upon what you just said, Patrick, you know, the fact that Warhol was multidisciplinary, it's so important, um, you know, young artists today, the emerging artists, they find inspiration because Warhol was not defined by, by a particular media, you know, he was a painter, a, a, you know, the manager of the Velvet Underground, this is someone who sort of uh, broke the mold of what, what an artist can be, and I think a lot of artists gravitate towards that. And so what's really special is that the UCCA does a very similar type of program um, celebrating, you know, contemporary artists. And we do the same thing. You know, we just closed a show inspired by Warhol's book, America. It's, it was his la the last book he printed when he was alive in 1985. And the show that we had here um, in Pittsburgh invited five emerging artists to reflect on the book America, but their America, you know, America, you know, 2021 and all the artists in the show from Cambuio Lejime to Chloe Weiss, um, to Nona Faustine, all these artists were, you know, inspired by Warhol, but they, they have their own practice. And so um, bringing them all together, I think, was a really incredible moment. But we continue to do so, and, you know, also working with, you know, established international artists. So if any of you in Shanghai are planning to come to Pittsburgh, um, not only do we have the collection here, The Life and Legacy of Warhol, um, next year, next spring, we'll have a show um, by the Italian Alaska-based artist Paola Pivi, and also another artist that just is uh, multidisciplinary and very much responds uh, to her environment the way that, you know, Andy Warhol has. I wanted to ask you, Patrick, um, you know, we've done a lot of Warhol shows internationally. Um, what's different about this one and, and why were you interested in working with UCCA and, and with Philip Tenari and his team? It, it really is a tribute to Phil. Uh, he came here to Pittsburgh, as you know, Jose. And when I asked Phil what kind of show he would like to present in China, he said, well, I think it should be lesser known works, things that would surprise people about Warhol. And that, of course, is music to my ears, uh, because very typically in some of these big Warhol shows, people understandably want to see the quote unquote masterpieces. They want to see the soup cans and the Brillo box and the Elvis. And there are some of those works in this exhibition, but really that's a very narrow view of Warhol. And for many years, many decades, Warhol's later work was somewhat dismissed as being somehow inferior uh, to those great um, totemic works from the 1960s. But I think that uh, this idea of Warhol as a reflection of his times is important. So that work uh, that Warhol made in the 1970s into the 1980s before he passed is truly a reflection of his time. And yes, some of it does seem light, kind of surfacey, but uh, others, uh, other parts of the show that we uh, created, like the immaterial, looks at a sort of more spiritual or at least a, a type of uh, worldview that Warhol had that very much acknowledged that these things, all these beautiful things that we're surrounded with are transitory. And they sometimes present a sort of empty promise. So while Warhol was doing uh, things like the Rorschach paintings and the, the shadows, uh, he was also doing the dollar signs. So I think it's interesting that all of that came together at the same time. And people will be surprised at what they see about Warhol including Warhol as a filmmaker, Warhol as a serious mm -hmm. photographer, many areas that have not been explored as they should be. And, you know, a lot of that is explored in the catalog, uh, including a beautiful essay from you, Jose. I hear that the catalog is ready to go. It's going to be available in Shanghai. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about it, because I know everybody uh, in the art world is going to be eager to see this catalog. Yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope people watching this already have a copy in their hand. It's got a beautiful sort of iridescent cover um, with a really uh, wonderful shimmer to it. But yeah, this book is incredible. It's uh, it's like 400 pages, full color publication, um, exhibition catalog, and it's it's really beautiful. And I haven't seen a, a Warhol book uh, this large in, in quite a while. 
um, and it's exclusively our collection, but the, the, uh, the exhibition catalog also has some new text. So I wrote, a, I wrote a text about Warhol, Warhol becoming Andy Warhol and specifically focusing around his birthday. Um, you know, he loved to party so much and be amongst others, but when it came to his birthday, he was sort of a, sort of a sourpuss. And so I was trying to like, look at, you know, look at Andy as someone, um, as he increasingly uh, grew more famous, he also grew older and just kept capturing those sensitivities. Um, but we also have um, Stephanie Chow, this is someone who was invited by the um, UCCA. Um, she's a writer, an art critic, and a professor, and she focuses on Warhol's production and aligns it sort of with technology, even going into today. I know we talk about uh, social media and, you know, what would, what would Andy be doing today? That's, a, that's certainly a big question everyone asks and something we are currently exploring. Um, and then we have uh, an essay from Blake Gopnik. Blake Gopnik is the Warhol scholar who um, recently, recently um, wrote the, the the official Andy Warhol biography, and I encourage anybody watching if they want to learn more about Warhol. Uh, Blake's original biography is 900 pages long, so it'll keep you keep you busy through the winter. Um, but there is an essay in in this catalog, and it's really special because it really um, digs deep into Warhol's education here in Pittsburgh. You know, everyone forgets that he. Um, is from Pittsburgh, or whether they might not even know because they associate Warhol with as a New Yorker. And so Blake, Blake really digs into Warhol's fundamental education here in Pittsburgh as an art student and looking at those influences. And it's a really, um, really beautiful um, essay as well. The catalog, I'm sure it'll be available everywhere, but I do hope people get their hands on it. And um, I, I look forward to, you know, uh, grabbing a copy myself. But yeah, this- I can't yeah. wait to see it. Yeah, I know this exhibition is great. I, I wish we could be there, Patrick, uh, but I know that's going to be a fabulous opening. There will be uh, programming as well aligned with um, the exhibition as well as film screenings, etc. So I'm really looking forward to um, this exhibition opening and, and uh, you know, being introduced to a lot of new audiences. Yeah, well, we are both a little bit jealous of everybody who gets to see it in person. Um, but it was made with loving care, and we're very grateful also to have made new friends at UCCA, which is an incredible institution and a fantastic partner for us. So we thank all of you for uh, coming to the exhibition, being interested in the exhibition, and we hope that that will lead you to come visit us in Pittsburgh at the Andy Warhol Museum as well. <laughs>